Hey friends, Paul Glasgow back here with you again. And we're continuing our series on the Cold War rifles. We're doing our series on the FNFAL, the HKG3 or HK91, whichever one you want to call it, the M14, the M16, and the AK-47. Now those are my five favorite and I think most influential rifles during the Cold War era. However, I feel like we can't really proceed down that path in talking about those five rifles until we talk about the one that probably influenced every single one of them in some way or another and probably was the most the most influential weapon in the 20th century. It changed the way rifles were made, used. It's the Sturmgewehr 44. This rifle, which we will refer to as the STG 44 because Sturmgewehr is a little bit different for me to try to pronounce and sometimes I'll misspeak and call it the MP44, which it also is. It's just it was later the ride of the STG 44 uh, from Adolf Hitler. At the time this rifle was designed, most of your cartridges were long range, full power cartridges. This one, however, was designed and built in an intermediate range, which was the 7.92 by 33 millimeter. Hitler opposed that. Hitler was not a fan of short or intermediate range. He felt like you had your short range, which is your pistol calibers, and then you had your full power. He didn't see the need for anything under 1200 uh, meters. This rifle was designed to be an intermediate range rifle, carry more ammo, easier to carry, easier to pack. As you can see, it's shorter. That was not a big thing that Hitler cared for. In fact, Hitler tried in so many ways to scrub the design and even manufacture at some point of the STG-44 and the MP-44. Had it not been for the Germany Army Ordnance Office, this rifle may not have ever happened because there were times during the development of that 7.92 by 33 that Hitler tried to get them to scrub it. They, in a couple of cases, actually secretly continued the advancement of the STG-44 because they saw the potential, they saw the need, they had more vision than Hitler did. Let's face it, we all know Hitler was a fool, he was an idiot, and he almost proved it by not allowing this rifle to be manufactured and designed. In 1940, the very early stages of the MP44, it was called the Machine Carbine 42, the MK42. It would later become the MP43 series as we know it. It was gas operated and it had a 30 round magazine, very much like you see it right here. In 1942, 11,853 MK42s were manufactured and put out there to the German troops. Doesn't sound like a lot and it's really not a lot during wartime era, but this was all due to Hitler. Hitler didn't see the importance of this cartridge or the rifle, so he really squashed a lot of the manufacture and production of this rifle. By 1943, the MP43 became a winner in every respect. It won trials, it won tests. It was pretty undeniable at that point that this needed to be out in the field to help the Germans win the war. However, Hitler went one step further than just protesting the manufacture of this rifle and the, the cartridge that went with it. He banned it, but the German Army Ordnance Office secretly proceeded because again, they knew what this thing's potential was. The German troops on the Eastern Front were even going so far as to use captured Soviet automatic weapons because they didn't have a decent enough weapon. This was kind of the pivotal point for the Germans at that point to be able to tell Hitler and convince him, look, we're winning trials, tests, this MP44 is beating everything up, now our troops are taking other countries' weapons and using them in war because we don't have the right tools for our guys. So in 1944, all these things led up to Hitler finally accepting the fact that this is what we need out there to help us win this war. Now, you know how Hitler was, a little bit nutty. He always wanted to have these real vicious names, these real tough sounding names for everything that he had. You know, his tanks and his firearms, his rifles and all that good stuff. So we named this the Sturmgewehr 44. Sturmgewehr, that's where the term assault weapon comes from. In German, if you put it in a translating app, you'll actually see Sturmgewehr is actually translated to assault rifle. This rifle has 30 round magazines that shoots again, the 7.92 by 33 millimeter round at 500 rounds per minute. Most of the troops were issued six magazines that came with each one of their rifles. Fully loaded with the 30 rounds in the magazine, it weighs in at 12 pounds. It shoots around at 2,250 feet per second and it has a 400 yard effective range. Yes, 400 yard effective range. Yeah, that was considered intermediate because Hitler really looked at wanting his troops to be able to be effective at 1,200, not realizing they needed that short range. Now you're probably thinking, well, why wouldn't you want the 1,200? I mean, that's better than 400, right? Yeah, but the rounds, those big rounds, those full powered rounds were so big that in full auto, they were totally uncontrollable. 
you could control this thing at the rate of fire that you were shooting it because the rounds weren't so full powered. So it was a lot more effective in those short ranges like that. Again, if you wanted to take your single shots or your semi-auto shots out at 400 yards, you were still effective at a pretty good range. Now, if you ever hear any negative things about the STG-44, it's typically late in the war, late 1944, uh, the very end of 1944, late in the war, where Hitler and the Germans had pretty much painted themselves into a corner. Um, they were losing the war and all over the place uh, throughout Europe. Finally, the Americans had come into the war and were really helping the Russians and everybody else out, or the Soviets out. And what had happened was the Germans didn't have access to the metals and the woods that they had earlier in the war. So they were getting substandard things and products that they were building these rifles with. And of course, they were spitting them out pretty fast. So the quality control was pretty much none at that point. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of these ri rifles were prone to rust. They weren't even getting the proper finish. So they'd go out there into the field, get a little bit damp, wet, whatever, and they would rust up and corrode. So a lot of things caused some negativity towards the STG-44 towards the end of the war. However, we have to realize this. Had Hitler recognized the ST-44's potential, there's a very good chance the war's turnout and history could have been a little bit different. Now, I'm not saying they would have won no doubt Germany would have lost. We were just too powerful for them. There's no way they were, were going to win the war. Heck, we had nuclear bombs at that point anyway. So we would have won it one way or the other. But it could have been prolonged a little bit. That European conflict could have lasted a little bit, little bit longer had this SGG-44 come out because it was capable of killing a lot of people really, really fast. Where these, they used this thing on the Eastern Front with the Soviets, they were wiping them out. I mean, they were wiping them out. The Germans had a field day with this thing on that Eastern Front. There's no doubt in my mind, guys, that this is the most influential weapon of the 20th century. No doubt in my mind. It changed the way people fought and it changed the way people designed their rifles. This was an intermediate round. It had a high capacity magazine. It had a shorter length and it was very controllable in full auto due to the way it was made along with that smaller caliber cartridge. Now for our next Cold War series video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going chronologically through all the rifles that I picked earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about each one and their relevance towards the Cold War and how they were used and the effectiveness of it. Not to pick on this guy right here, but to finish out my video on the STG-44, I want to show you the AK-47, which is coming up next in our series. You tell me that you don't think the STG-44 was ever seen by any Soviets before they built the AK-47. You tell me that with a straight face. <laughs> the sights are pretty much identical. Front sight is pretty much identical. Gas system on the top of the rifle. Curved magazine. There are too many similarities to deny that Kalashnikov ever saw one of these rifles and he has made that very bold statement that he was just I believe a sergeant he said and he would never have had access to any captured German weapons. Dude I got a lot of respect for you Kalashnikov. A lot. A lot. You changed the world with the AK-47 but you had a seed planted with the SGG-44. Whether you saw it, handled it, or saw a picture or a video or had a dream about it. You saw the STG-44. There's no question. There's no question. Just admit it. Now maybe you would have been killed if you admitted that you actually handled one of these guys, but nobody with any kind of relative intelligence out there is going to ever think that the innovativeness that went into this, that you just dreamed it all up by yourself and came up with this and oh by the way, coincidentally, you guys actually possessed a rifle that looked eerily similar to it. Now, to give you your credit, you made an amazing rifle that superseded everything the STG-44 did. No question, no question. This is by far a more superior rifle than this right here. In fact, your internals are way different than the STG-44. So I'm giving you your props. You deserve your props. And you'll get that in our next video on the AK-47. However, I'm not buying it, and I don't think many people are buying it other than some Soviets and some Russians out there, that you never saw the STG-44 and that it didn't have any kind of impact on your overall design of the AK-47. 